All right, so we designed our own type using the shape tools, using the pen tool, using uh, when they overlap each other, using the, the Pathfinder options. And now what I can do is I can select each one holding down shift, don't leave any out, and then you can transform all of them, like stretch them, rotate them, squish them, and try to remember your inspirations, right? So my inspiration is this type blocking, and my inspiration is the TikTok. And do I think it's what I want, right? And then you can make little adjustments, like I think double click. I want to move this anchor point down, move this one out, change that rounding tool. There we go. Then maybe push it back again. Kind of like that. You get to play with all of these options. And again, parallels matter. You don't want something to be almost parallel. You want it to be exactly parallel. Or you want to make it clearly not parallel. All right. Push the kerning a little bit closer. Maybe exaggerate this thin to thick. Maybe stretch it a little bit taller. Move this over. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so next. We should talk about saving, right? So at this point, I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to turn off my image so I just see my vectors. And then I'm going to export with this button as an SVG. So I download that as an SVG. That's the only kind of vector format this allows you to export without paying for it, right? Because we don't want to have to pay for it. So SVG. Then I'll show you what we can do with that SVG once you come back into class. So it saved two downloads. There it is. Because I turned off my sketch, the raster is not in there. And then when I bring this into class, I'm going to open it with the default program for SVGs, which is Adobe Illustrator. And you'll see it's all there, even if it goes outside of the artboard a little bit. If I look at the layers, I can see all of the different vector paths. It's my small selection tool. Remember, we don't want outlines. There it is. Okay, the reason I saved it at that point is even though I'm not done with all my type design, I wanted to save the type design that I was happy with. And then I'm going to move that into assignment six, but I'm going to name it the same thing, not just page one, but the same thing that the text says, right? I'm going to mark this, this is a transitional file, mark it as purple. So now I want the, the Nick knock part, and I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I am going to use all text tools for this because many of you want to be able to do that. So I kind of make a generic text box. I type it in, right? I select it all by just double clicking on it. And then I go here and I look at the, the list of different typefaces. A lot of them are not going to work at all for what I want. 
think the, the one that got closest should have remembered the name. Sometimes I'll do a screen grab of it before I traced it. And then I can try a, uh, a font. So that's a typeface, that's the font. Okay, now I'm just going to really increase the point size. But instead of doing it all right here, I'm just going to immediately, because it's selected, outline the text. That allows me to then just make that vector a lot bigger and start modifying it. So if I double click it, now I've got individual vector shapes. The problem is, instead of with just the K, where I did them one at a time, this links them all into one path, like they're already merged. But it doesn't mean I can't still easily modify them. So if I double click, now I'm just going to drag down the points. And this time I'm going to stick a little bit closer to my sketch. Because you want the type to be supportive of your spot illustration, not to take all the focus away. These stars are starting to, to take a lot of focus. I can also just take the opacity down on this while I'm working so that I can line it up with my sketch a little bit better. I'm going to avoid perfect horizontals and verticals. And stupid me, this happens. What did I do that was dumb? I used the wrong letter. I did Nick again instead of knock. Oh, but maybe it's an opportunity. So I can... And now I just have to, because it's all combined. I'm going to take these out. I'll keep the K where it is for now. Just taking out that I. And then later I'll build in that, uh, that O. So now double click on this. I'm going to bring it over to here, to here, to here. Remember, this is to show you, you really do have full control when it comes to vectors and anchor points. You can really do anything you want with this type. You want it to be readable, but type, this Latin type, is pretty forgiving that way. So I think I want to do it like that and then round this out. Choose my rounds carefully. I think that's the only round I want. All right, now I'm going to take the opacity back up on that. And now I want to play with the O. Pinch that a little bit more. Get that parallel going. All right. Now, if I want more space for that O, more kerning, I can hold down Shift or just stretch it. 
right? And then shift everything over. But it can be limiting not to be able to individually work with each letter. So some students choose, if they use the type tool, to do one letter at a time, like I did the K there. Okay, now with the O, same thing. Use the text tool. I'm going to type an O. Let's do a lowercase. I'm going to select it, double click. Come on, there we go. And then use a typeface. And what I just used last was something in this family, you know, just very modern. And then bold it, but bold isn't an option here. And that's okay, bold doesn't need to be an option. So I'm just going to grow it by first outlining it and then growing it. Okay, and you can see it render. And if I hold on these corners, I can change the shape and the angle. If I want to see my sketch more clearly, I can take its opacity down. as I place it all within this free program. And because it's it's pretty bare bones, this vector.com, it's actually kind of perfect for type design. Now, how do I make it wider? I have to move all these anchor points down. So, Basically move them in, and there's more anchor points there than I expect in this type design. See, I get these extra ones that just layer on top. So this might be more trouble than it's worth. So I'm going to show you another way. I'm just going to get rid of all these. You know, just click on the anchor point and hit delete. And then, just like I use Pathfinder to merge the stars into these, I'm going to use the Pathfinder option. I'm going to make a duplicate of this, Command-C, Command-V, and then shrink it. And I'm going to subtract this from this by holding down Shift, select them both, and instead of merging them, I'm going to subtract. And that will give me with 100% black color, with no border. I want to make sure the borders are turned off on all of these, even if they're minimal, right? And now I can adjust the kerning and the spacing. And you see how that fills my, my text blocking. Now I think I might need one little star, one something. Give it a little pizzazz. Maybe I'll, I'll raise the in up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. So how about I use the shape tool and Let's try a gear. So we have stars on the top, and we're going to have a gear at the bottom because it is a, supposed to be kind of a a tin toy kind of concept. Turn off the border, fill the color with solid black. I'm not going to merge them until I'm happy with it. Oh, I kind of like that little gap I can get. But let's rotate it a little bit more. Uh, Commando, just to get it all on screen. All right, you want your type to work just on its own. So I can always just turn off my sketch, see if that's readable and engaging. and. I think I want this to be a little bit bigger, tighter kerning. 